What's up guys? Today we are going to be installing our new polyurethane differential mount. Now, one of the ways you can really easily tell that your car's diff mount is going out is if you have an automatic and you put it into gear and it clunks. It's just the entire drive line kind of torquing up and the differential mount just is too weak and it's just kind of letting everything slop to the side. Um, I converted to a manual, but I can still feel the clunk whenever I go ahead and start putting it into gear. You can feel a clunk through the drive line and you can hear it sometimes too. Um, so that's kind of way I know that my differential mount needs to be replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it with this Pass Power Innovations one. Um, this is about $150 if I remember correctly. Um, they do have solid mounts, but I do not recommend a solid mount unless you are a track car. Um, and then I believe at that point you also need solid uh, subframe bushings. But anyway, I've got this one, so let's go ahead and install it. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get a jack and I'm going to put it under the actual differential and push it up and then support the car on both sides. Um, I use the frame rails, I'll show you in a little bit when I do it, um, but I put a block of wood to kind of help disperse that force, otherwise the jack stands will actually just kind of punch holes in your frame rails. Um, but I don't really recommend the pinch welds unless you are, you know, really desperate for it um, because they don't like, they don't like being pushed up on, um, especially with a flat surface like a jack. So I'm going to go ahead and jack this up real quick and then we can start disinstalling Disassembling. Yeah, we're going to take out the old one um, that no longer works. But let's go ahead and jack this up. All right, I don't know if you guys can see, but right here is the subframe mount. Um, this is a big piece right here. And I was gonna go ahead and put it on the frame rail, which you can see is a little bit further in over there. Um, but I was at the height that I wanted to be at, and these jack stands weren't quite low enough, so I went ahead and put it here. Um, you could put a like hockey puck around that, I guess, to kind of disperse the force. Um, but those are also very solid mounting points for the rear subframe. Um, so you can also put the jack stands there. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna leave our jack under here. And we're gonna actually use it to, um, to hold up our uh, differential because when we take off the mount, it's going to want to fall down. Um, so we need this jack here in order to hold it. What I'm gonna go, go ahead and do is take this and kind of move it off to the side. Um, so we have a little bit more working room here from the back. All right, well, I hope you guys can see this well enough. Um, this is where the differential mount is. It's right there um, off the differential. Um, and you can see off to the side, there's a bolt holding this heat shield on. Um, I believe those are 10 millimeters. There's one on both sides. The other side actually has a ground strap, so you wanna make sure to put that back on. We're gonna go ahead and take this off real quick so we can access the bolts easily. I believe it's just the 10 mil on that side and then the 10 mil on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off real quick. All right, now that we got that heat shield out, you can see there's two nuts, one up on the frame and then one down on the differential itself. And then we have one bolt. The bolt is 14 millimeters. The nut is 17 millimeters on the top there. And then I believe the one on the differential is three quarters of an inch. I used a three quarter socket and it looked like it worked, um, but it might be 17 as well. And I just don't have a deep socket 17. Um, so three quarters, I believe, will work. We're gonna go ahead and undo those on both sides. Um, this is where you want to make sure your uh, differential is supported correctly with the jack, or else it will fall, um, because that is one of the only things holding up. It is bolted into the subframe, but um, it will lean backwards pretty heavily, and it'll cause you a, a good nightmare. Um, so let's go ahead and undo those real quick. All right, so you can see we got the old mount out is right here. Um, the top four bolts were pretty easy. I guess two nuts, two bolts. Um, the two that go through the side right here into the differential. Um, <laughs> well, this is one of them right here. It's a stud. The entire actual stud came out. So instead of just being the nut that came off, the stud came out. The other one, um, it had two nuts and a washer. Um, they came off the stud. Um, that was the one that had the ground strap on it. Um, but <laughs> it did take a little bit of power to get those two off. Um, I think those ones are torqued to like 80 foot pounds. Um, so definitely is a little bit of an effort to get it, um, but I did, when I got those off, it was still on there. What I had to do is use my jack to slowly lower the differential down, um, and then once it was far enough to get off the, like, the studs that were coming down into these, um, then I was able to go ahead and just take this right off. 
Now what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna follow the Past Power Innovations installation guide and it tells us we're gonna go ahead and take this L bracket here and we're gonna go ahead and bolt it onto the differential kind of like in that orientation if you can see. Um, so I'll go ahead and bolt it up and then I'll show you guys what I did. All right guys, as you can see we got that bracket on right there. Um, it is just a washer and a nut from what came off on both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten those down to 80 foot pounds. All right guys, we got the new poly mount in. Um, one thing to note, there is a rounded side and a flat side. The rounded side goes out um, right here. And then on the top, there is a bolt. Um, this is, comes with the kit, it is gold. Um, and you're gonna wanna put a washer and a lock washer on that as well. Now if you can't tell, um, it is still a little bit loose. You're gonna wanna leave that finger tight for just the moment um, because it's gonna help with kind of adjusting um, all the final stuff. But now we're going to go ahead and grab uh, the final outer cage here. And these square posts go towards the bottom. Um, you can see right here we have these square nuts that are going to go up through here and they're going to sit in there. It's going to go through the bottom of the poly mount that we just put in there. And then we're going to go ahead and put a, a washer. Oops and then a lock nut. These are lock nuts, you can see they have nylon on them. I'm gonna go put those on as well. I think the most difficult part here is going to be getting those pegs on top aligned. Um, so we're probably going to have to drop the, uh, sorry, we're gonna probably have to drop the mount again, kind of like we did to get it off, the old one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of wiggle this cage in there and hopefully we can get it in. All right, you can see I went ahead and got the cage up in there now. Um, I went ahead and put these bolts through the bottom here. I went ahead and torqued these down to 50 foot-pounds. I'm not sure if it's super necessary to torque them to that spec. Um, they do have nylon lock washers or lock nuts, um, so they should be pretty fine. But I went ahead and tightened them up pretty well. These top nuts up here, you want to go, or the bolts, you want to actually go ahead and um, tighten those down as well now, because you're supposed to finger tighten them. Um, I really recommend getting a ratcheting wrench like this. If you just want to buy one, this is five eighths. It works for these ones and the ones on top. Um, it really helps to just be able to reach in there, um, put on top, you know, and then just tighten it down with all you need. Um, I'm not quite sure if there's a torque spec for those, um, but it is doing pretty good now. I went ahead and just tightened it as much as I could because I can't get a torque wrench up in there so I can tighten it to a torque. Um, now we're going to go ahead and put on the original stud and nut. Um, you can see they go up in there, the bolt and nut, sorry. Um, the nuts go to 50 foot-pounds, and the bolts go to 25 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead, and I don't know if I'll be able to get a torque wrench up in there, but I sure am just going to tighten them as hard as I can, um, and then that should be pretty much it. All right, guys, we got both nuts and bolts in on either side, and I went ahead and tightened them down as best as I could, um, and I think I'm going to call it here. I also put that ground strap back on. Um, to this one stud over on this side of the differential. Um, but all that is left is just putting that one heat shield back on. It's just those two 10 millimeters, and that is it. So I hope you guys thought that this was helpful. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you guys later.